Okay, this is such a cool question and it has an even cooler answer. In 2001, artifacts were recovered from the Titanic wreckage and it included a satchel that had vials of perfume oils. And the satchel belonged to this guy, Adolf Saalfeld, a German immigrant and a chemist. He was on board the Titanic because he was hoping to make his fortune opening a perfume shop in the United States. While he survived the disaster, he was one, ostracized for being a male survivor when women and children had been prioritized. And two, he didn't have time to retrieve his perfume oils, so they sat on the bottom of the Atlantic for 89 years before being recovered. When the satchel was opened, the researchers said the scent filled the entire room with an Edwardian perfume. How did these perfumes manage to retain their scent after being on the ocean floor for almost 90 years? Well, perfume keeps better when it's in an airtight container and it's best to store them in cold, dark places, so actually optimal conditions. The story doesn't end there though. Analysis on the vials found that they contained floral compounds, including rose, lavender, orange blossom, and lily of the valley. And then in 2012, for the 100th anniversary of the Titanic sinking, QVC launched a perfume called Legacy 1912 Titanic. And this intricate design you see on the bottle was based off of a door that was recovered from the wreckage. And the formula for this perfume was based on the recovered perfume vials. Now, this fragrance is discontinued and I can't for the life of me find it anywhere, but it had notes of amber, rose, lemon, and neroli. It's described as a light, airy floral. But let's jump back to 1912 and talk about the perfumes that the passengers on the Titanic might have worn. So we don't know specific perfumes, but I can tell you what was going on in Western perfumery at the time. This was actually a turning point. Up until this time, Victorian and Edwardian women were wearing single note botanical perfumes. So we're talking rose, violet, lavender, things like that. But as I've talked about in my videos on Guerlain, Chanel, and Ubicon, this was starting to change to favor more intricate compositions, as well as compositions utilizing synthetics and aldehydes. Now here's some popular perfumes that were around in 1912. First off, we've got Calque Fleur by Ubicon. And I've talked about this one several times before. This was the perfume that Princess Diana famously wore on her wedding day, and she even spilled it on her dress. This perfume was launched in 1912, and it is definitely a perfume that women in first class would have worn. Calque Flor was actually a precursor to Chanel No. 5, and it inspired perfumer Ernest Beau, who ended up creating Chanel No. 5. Next, another one I've talked about before, Jiki by Guerlain, very popular at the time. It could have been worn by men or women. All fragrances can. Guerlain also launched this classic, La Air Bleu, in 1912, so that's another strong contender. I also think that perfumes by Coty would have been represented on board. In my video on the perfumes worn by the Romanoff Grand Duchesses, including Anastasia, these are their actual perfume bottles. I talked about all of these more in depth, so you can go watch that if you want to learn more about these ones. But these were favored among the aristocratic class at the time. And Chateau Kriegler that I talked about in my last video on Grace Kelly, that was also launched in 1912. Don't know if it would have been popular yet, but another possibility. And then from my collection, the perfumes that would have most closely resembled the perfumes that were popular in 1910 would include Antoinette, Georgiana, Gatsby, and Beautiful Fool. Thank you so much for this question. You can find more videos on the history of Guerlain, Chanel, and Coty on the playlist on my profile.